with John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com through another exciting episode for you. In this episode, actually I'm not even outside in my garden. I'm actually going to start growing inside my house. And to do that, I got a handy dandy fish tank. And no, I'm not going to be growing some fish, right? While you can grow fish inside your own fish tank and, and fish them or eat them or whatever you want to do, that's not a very sustainable way <laughs> to grow food in my opinion. Because a fish, they grow very slowly and they def definitely don't have a lot of meat on them. And in addition, people may think fish are like good for them. In my opinion, they're really not the best thing for you guys to eat. Many people might think they're high in protein. Well, what I'm going to grow in this fish tank is actually what the fish eats. So I always encourage you guys to eat lower on the food chain and, you know, eat, the, eat plants, eat fruits and vegetables out of your garden if you have a garden outside, you know. Uh, that would feed the larger animals that normally people would eat. So generally people that are eating meat are getting their fruits and vegetables second hand. And in most cases, unfortunately, it's actually grains in the form of GMO corn and soy, you know, which are raised for the animals that people are eating the most. And uh, likewise, you know, I recommend eating fruits and vegetables instead of the animals. And, uh, you know, instead of eating fish, I recommend eating what the fish eats, right? What do they eat? They eat algae. So that's what I'm going to be growing in my fish tank. The algae that I got shipped to me in this box is super easy to grow. Anybody that has a home <laughs> inside, or you could even grow them outside, but I like to control the environment a little more on the inside. You can grow your own algae, and the cool thing is, unlike little fishies that you're growing in here that grow slow, the algae grows super fast. And the type of algae I'll be growing is a spirulina and the spirulina algae can double, you know, in just 24 to 48 hours. So it doubles in mass in just a day or two. So this is a very sustainable food source, whether you're into prepping for disaster in the future, or whether you just want to be able to grow some of your own food and you don't have a place outside to do it, everybody could get a 10 gallon fish tank like I did at their local pet store. This thing was like on sale for like 10 bucks. You know, and get this kit here, and uh, you know that's what I'm gonna be doing in this uh, episode today. Now, in addition, the spirulina that I'm growing is actually very high in phytochemicals and phytonutrients, also vitamins and minerals. You know, it's said that uh, people that are in the Olympics use the spirulina, it gives them extra energy so that they could win. All this stuff. Also, there's a lot of research with the health benefits of spirulina and how it can be helpful you know, when you're trying to manage or heal different diseases in the body. You know, I've been taking spirulina for years in its powdered dry form, but much like I grow some of the powdered dry forms of the vegetables that they sell at the health food store, I could now grow my own spirulina. It's very simple, very easy, and there's minimal chances of getting it contaminated with bad algaes or whatnot due to the way that you're growing it indoors and especially you know if you're growing it indoors you know there's not gonna be some random things that are gonna get in there and mess you up so this is my number one way I want you guys yes you guys that have apartments condos and that are not yet growing outside but following me you guys want to grow your own spirulina spirulina in itself is a superfood and believe it or not it's the number one protein source per calorie in the world the algae have more protein than even you know the best beef, chicken, fish, eggs, and in addition, you won't get the negative side effects you know that you do get with eating meat, like raising your IGF-1, which you know can increase your cancer incidences, as well as get things like uh, colon cancer and other things. So you know, eat plants for the win, and to me, spirulina is just another plant. So I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this episode. I got a shipment from Spirulina Systems in Palmdale, California, uh, Priority Mail, and we got their complete system. The only thing aside from what's in this box here, I got the X system, you'll need is a fish tank, and if it's cold where you live, you're going to need a fish tank heater, right? But other than that, you don't need anything. It's nice and warm here in Las Vegas, so I don't need anything. At this point, maybe come wintertime, I might invest in a heater. But yeah, I don't need anything for that. So let me go ahead and show you guys what's in this setup here. Super simple, super easy. I mean, some of this stuff you can maybe put together yourself, but I just recommend getting a complete, proven, and tested kit. 
All right, number one, we have the uh, air lift pump. So this is the air lift pump here, uh, set up, ready to go. Uh, next, we have a uh, digital thermometer and some pH test strips. This is very important. Uh, we need to monitor the temperature in the tank. The spirulina doesn't like it, you know, like 105 or 103. They lose their life, they're gone, poof. You know, so I wouldn't want to put them outside in the summertime. You know, if it's too cold, they're barely staying alive. Like, you know, if you like go inside the Costco and you go in the freezer or the fridge, you know, area where you're picking out your produce, you just kind of move a little bit slower. And I know those of you guys that live in Canada A in the winter, you might move a little bit slower in the winter time. And that's what happens with the spirulina, right? When it's too cold, the spirulina just is just uh, staying alive, but they're not thriving and they're not multiplying, right? So the optimal temperature you want to keep the spirulina is maybe between like high 80s, low 90s, maybe up to like 93 to 95. And that's where they're really going to be like, oh my God, we're so happy. The weather's nice and we're going to multiply like crazy. So yeah, very important to check the temperature. The other thing that the pH test strips, this is also a very important component of the system because you want to make sure the water in your tank where you're growing your spirulina is the proper pH. And the proper pH for the spirulina is about 10. And this is a very alkaline solution where literally other things won't grow. Okay, next we just got a standard air pump. This is a Tetra Whisper air pump uh, up to 10 gallon aquariums. And just a standard air pump, hopefully it's pretty quiet. And then uh, the next thing we got is, uh, we got a mineral booster here. So I don't exactly know what this is called, mineral booster. And it's, uh, it's different kinds of uh, minerals in there. And this is a uh, food for the spirulina. In addition, we have some uh, iron chelate right here in this little dropper. It's just gonna basically take uh, two nice squeezes of the iron chelate. Um, to basically get the spirulina growing. Now I have seen some people basically just get some uh, standard iron nails and put them in water and let them rust and pour some of that rust water in. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be eating rust water indirectly <laughs> or some of the contaminants that could happen on there like tetanus. <laughs> so I'm just going to get the, uh, the iron here, the chelated iron. Uh, in addition, we got a, a post harvest food for the spirulina and we also have some starter packets of food for the uh, spirulina, basically, which is the nutri nutrients. And if you go down to the health food store and you buy organic spirulina, you know, this is basically the nutrients that they're feeding the organic spirulina, you know, that you would buy. Now, I have purchased organic spirulina in the past and have eaten it a lot. And yeah, I believe any way you could get your superfoods in you, whether it's dry or fresh, is good. But I like to say, freshness is always best. So I'm really glad I'm going to have live spirulina that I'll be able to harvest and put into smoothies, add to sauces, put in different recipes, add to soups, and check this out. Even I could take my own spirulina and then dry it to make spirulina sheets. And let me tell you, my girlfriend, she loves dried spirulina. So I'm looking forward to get some of the fresh spirulina that I mix in with other ingredients and herbs and spices and make my own amazing spirulina crackers. So yeah, I got a couple more uh, packets of these starter um, nutrients here. And then the last thing you'll need that's very important, which are sealed in these uh, uh, plastic bottles. Josh would not be happy. Um, <laughs> and then it's sealed in the plastic bottle, plus they actually seal it in an additional bag. So this is shipped very well. And uh, these bottles actually contain live spirulina cultures. And so uh, don't drink them, they're too valuable to drink because what you're going to do is you're going to put them in the tank with some water, with some nutrients, and then basically uh, multiply them and then you're going to eat them. So the pro this process takes about maybe about a month or so, you know, depending on your temperature and climatic conditions. But in about a month, you could be harvesting spirulina every other day from this 10-gallon kit. Now, if you want to get a 20-gallon kit, you could be harvesting like every single day. So that's simply amazing. You can grow the highest protein food source with all the amino acids in there, as well as a lot of different phytochemicals and phytonutrients. Uh, what is it? Uh, phycocyanin and all these other cool things that are really healthy for you in your house. I mean, I think I might even like spooling it even a little bit more than my vegetables. 
And in my opinion, you know, as good as microgreens are, and you could grow those inside, I think spirulina is actually a lot more nutritious than even the microgreens. So that's definitely saying a lot. So yeah, that's all we got in here. I mean, this is super simple, super easy to set up. I guess without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get setting up for you guys. So uh, probably the first thing I wanna do is I wanna set up this uh, temperature uh, thing here. Thermometer, that's very important. So we just got a digital thermometer here for aquariums. And the cool thing is it's actually already got a battery installed and actually they're even nice enough to give you a spare battery for when it goes out because it is very important to monitor the temperature of your tank. So uh, we're basically just gonna go ahead and uh, stick this probe in there and I'll probably just stick it like on the bottom of the tank to get a pretty good reading there. And then we're just gonna like have it uh, come all the way up the top and we're going to basically stick this guy on. All right, let's peel this thing off. <laughs> all right, we're going to stick that guy right on the front there so I could always monitor the temperature of my tank. So that was super simple, super easy. I mean, this is an easy kit to uh, set up here. Of course, we got some uh, pH test strips. We're going to need those in a little bit. Uh, the next thing is we're going to go ahead and set up the lift pump. So this part is actually uh, fairly easy to set up. Basically, you're just gonna take these little uh, holder things and pop it in the suction cup. Then you're gonna go ahead and take these holder things and put it around the tube, one on either end. Okay, once you have this all ready, next we're gonna go ahead and take the air tube and find a little hole on the bottom. And we're just gonna stick the air tube through that little hole and I'm gonna just basically uh, guide it up a little bit and this is basically just a lift pump. The air is going to get pumped through here. The air bubble is going to lift water at the same time as lifting the air up to the top. So this will oxygenate and keep the water flowing inside your tank. We're then going to go ahead and stick it up at a little angle. Once again, not straight, so the water, could, the air could, you know, flow up and out and uh, circulate the water. We'll have this coming off this side here. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and take our. Uh, Tetra Whisper Air Pump. This is like a little pump that I had when I was a kid when I had goldfish in a 10 gallon tank. I wonder where that tank is now. That's a, and hopefully this uh, air pump is a lot quieter than the one I had when I was a kid. Uh, simply we're just gonna go ahead and uh, plug this guy in, plug the air tube in, and uh, then we can go ahead and uh, plug this guy in the wall. I mean, super simple, super easy. Even a child could do it, and if your child is doing it with you, you know, just supervise them, please. <laughs> and I can't wait till I have kids and I'm gonna, they're gonna be growing their own spirulinas like science projects and starting a raised bed garden. It's gonna be really cool. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug this guy in. Wow, I plugged it in, man. Can you guys even hear the pump? If I shut up for a minute, maybe you could hear it. You could barely hear that pump. This is truly a whisper quiet pump. It's pretty amazing. All right, so let's go ahead and unplug that pump. Now we're getting through all the different uh, components here. The next thing we're going to need to do is add water. So I want to stop there for a second because you know the water you add can make or break your system, right? You can be successful or not. If you just go to the tap and fill up the tap water and put it in here, you're probably going to fail. The chlorine in the tap water is not good for the spirulina. It's like oil and water, they don't mix. Neither does chlorine and spirulina or neither does chlorine and the microbes in your garden soil for that matter, right? So you want to get a good filtered water, you know. I would like to get some good like spring water out of a, you know, mineral spring, you know, or minimally get some, uh, you know, you could get some tap water and then let it sit out and dissipate uh, the chlorine. If you have chlorine, if you have chloramine, that stuff doesn't dissipate as easy, so you might want to maybe get some kind of, you know, spring water or filtered water, reverse osmosis or distilled water. So I guess that's what I'm going to go ahead and do next. I have a reverse osmosis set up in my kitchen that removes all the minerals and all, virtually all the contaminants in there. And then we're going to fill that up uh, two and a half gallons uh, of water and we'll be back at you when we're done. So I have two gallons of water in the tank now and this is reverse osmosis water. We're going to go ahead and add the last half gallon in there. And that'll bring me up to two and a half gallons. So the next thing to do is we're gonna go ahead and plug in the pump and then set up this air lift tube so you can see how that works. As you guys can see, it's uh, bubbling up. So we gotta basically uh, lower this guy down a bit. 
All right, so you guys can see the water is coming out the bottom. All right, so we got this uh, airlift pump going, and we want to basically get it all the way down to the bottom. Maybe I'll uh, attach the bottom suction cup to the bottom instead of the side. And then this guy will uh, adjust appropriately. So you can see it's kind of bubbling up. We want it to kind of be at a more of an angle here. So you can kind of adjust it up a little bit. That's a little bit too high. You see it's like moving really slow. We're going to adjust it down so it's moving pretty fast. I think right about there, it looks like we got a nice water flow and it's uh, bubbling and moving and circulating the water there. It's pretty good. Maybe we'll just a little bit higher. So yeah, now we got the airlift pump running. The next thing to do is we need to add our newts or our nutrients. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head and add the starter mixture. So they give you these bags and it says uh, instructions. Add half bag of starter to two and a half gallons of water or one bag to five gallons of water. Uh, use only reverse osmosis or distilled water. So, you know, that's what I'm using. I'm using the RO water. So perfect. So we're going to go ahead and uh, tear this thing open here. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, carefully pour out about half of this stuff into the tank. Alright, I think that's about half. Next, we'll need to stir it up. So I got a little spatula thing here. Stir this up and get it nice and mixed up. It's like I'm playing in the bathtub when I was a kid, you know, we're making waves. It's a tsunami, it's going to hit Hawaii. Ah! All right. <laughs> Looks like that's pretty much mixed up. Uh, next thing we need to do is we need to add the uh, iron chelate here. So this is super simple, super easy. We're just going to go ahead and suck it up. And then we're going to do is basically put two uh, teaspoonfuls or uh, two uh, uh, sucked up thingfuls. <laughs> it goes up about halfway and then you're just going to squirt it in. And then once again, you're going to want to mix that up pretty good. Ah, my pretty, I'm stirring the witch's brew. All right, stir it up nice and easy. Now the next thing, this is a, you know, additional thing that I got is the uh, mineral booster. So, you know, as you guys know, my gardening philosophy is I always like to add extra minerals to the garden because, you know, whatever's in the soil is what the plant will absorb and whatever is in the water is the nutrients that the spirulina will absorb so that when you eat the spirulina, you'll get those nutrients into you. So we're gonna go ahead and add the extra added mineral booster here. If you wanna add the appropriate amount of mineral booster, it's very important um, you know, to get the ratios right. You don't wanna get the water too much out of balance or there'll be some issues. So the appropriate amount to add is basically two ounces for every five gallons. Now because I'm only starting out with two and a half gallons, we're gonna add only one ounce. So I have a nice uh, measuring glass here. We're gonna go ahead and measure out only one ounce. Nope. All right, so I got one ounce of the mineral boost. We're just gonna go ahead and pour that in. Once again, we're going to go ahead and mix that up. Now this is where you would actually normally add the spirulina culture, but I'm not really good at following directions and the good news is they didn't actually include any directions with this kit, which actually I believe they should include at least some minimal amounts of directions with the kit. They basically direct you to their online website uh, where they actually have videos on how to set this up. Uh, I mean, which is really simple and easy to follow, but I think a lot of people might appreciate some written directions and at least in the written directions have a link to the website with the videos as well. So anyways, I'm not good at following directions. They didn't give any, so I'm actually able to follow videos really good. Hopefully you guys are too. Um, but nonetheless, I'm going to deal with something a little bit outside the box and I have not a huge idea if this is going to be good or not. 
You know, I suppose, you know, just like your garden, right? If you're growing in soil outside, you know, and you're using organic nutrients, you know, worm castings, rock dust, and all the things I recommend on my, recommend on my show, it's pretty hard to burn your plants. There's like a nice range. If you put too much of anything, it's going to create unfavorable conditions for your plants to grow. But I like to kind of stick in a range and you have a really big leeway for air when growing in like an outside raised bed. And if you want to grow outside, be sure to check my other episodes because all my other episodes virtually are having to do with growing food outside in the soil. I, of course, I also have videos of growing microgreens indoors. Yeah, I'll put a link below for that. And actually a link for sprouts indoors. I'll put a link below for that. Which are the two best other things you could grow indoors besides the spirulina. But in any case, you know, just like that, we want to create habitable conditions for the spirulina to grow and using RO or distilled water and the measurements as explained by spirulina systems, you will be successful. So you don't have to figure anything out. And this is, you know, one of the main reasons why I think you guys should buy a pre-made kit, you know, that they've done all the math and everything for you. So you're not mixing stuff up. Of course, if you're a DIY guy, you can search online and figure out how to mix all this stuff up yourself. You might save a few bucks, but you know, you might not get the good results. And I, I don't want to mess around, you know, when people have already figured out a perfect system that works, that's what I'm just going to follow. Cause I got other things to do than to play with my spirulina all day. <laughs> all right. So any, anyways, the thing outside the box I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and add the, uh, uh, pure Aussie ocean derived sea minerals. It's also sold under the brand name for growing as Gropel, and this is basically uh, sea minerals with the sodium removed. So this, I don't recommend you guys doing this. I'm doing this because I want to make sure I have mineral rich food. You could spray this on your plants outside because it doesn't have the sodium. You know, it's more forgiving, uh, you know, than some of the other ocean solid products out there for your outside gardening. That being said, you know, um, growing in this, um, you know, I'm not going to put that much. I'm just going to put just a little cap, like half of a capful in there. You know, and it's my belief that uh, some trace minerals are better than none. Now, if I put too much of this, that would cause the spirulina, you know, not to flourish. You know, and I believe by just adding a, a little bit, it's going to be all right. Because, uh, you know, a lot of people growing spirulina will use just standard uh, filtered tap water with the chlorine removed, which has naturally occurring minerals. And, uh... You know, by using the RO water and the nutrients they're providing, it may not provide all the minerals that I would like to see. So I guess you guys will see in future updates on how this worked for me. So I guess the next step is we're just going to go ahead and add the spirulina cultures. And they come in these bottles here that are sealed up. Now it's very important, you know, if you order this kit, you better be serious about doing this. Because you don't want to order this kit and let this stuff sit around for any more than a week you know, at most, and then you're not going to get as good a result as if you, you know, order the kit, you have your tank ready, you have your heater ready, and as soon as it comes, you do this easy couple minute setup, you know, because the longer this stuff sits, I mean, these are live, uh, you know, um, creatures inside here, the longer it sits, the more they, you know, uh, diminish. So yeah, I got this kit yesterday, I'm able to do it today, so that's what I'm doing. And I'm showing you guys. So yeah, then we're just gonna simply, uh, you know, pour in the spirulina culture here. And as you guys can see, it's turning the water green. Green is the color of the earth. All the plants on the earth that photosynthesize and make nutrients for us. So yeah. Oh man, you can just kind of slowly see the the water starting to change color. Go ahead and uh, put this next one in, and you're going to empty all three of the bottles into the system. Now, the cool thing is, you know, once you get your system up and running, and what's going to happen in about a month, you know, actually, from the time I'm pouring these guys in, and the, the water is filled with nutrients, these guys are going to be like, Well, we're happy, thank you. John at Growing Your Greens for growing our spirulina and making us happy. They're going to multiply, right? Just like if you got happy kids that are not fixed or happy cats. <laughs> um, and then they're going to make babies. And then, so these guys are going to double, you know, in 24 to 48 hours. They're going to double in spirulina growth. And after about a month, you know, after about a week, it's going to turn noticeably darker green. And then after about a month, that's when you could actually start to harvest them. 
and then at that point you're also going to add more nutrients. So once I harvest my spirulina, I'll be making another video on that. Here's the last of uh, three bottles we're adding. I think this has completely submerged my lift pump, so we're probably going to um, lift that up a little bit more to get a nice angle on it. All right, so that's all the spirulina. I mean, and we're, the final step is we're just going to go ahead and adjust this lift pump up a little bit. That's a little bit slow. We want a nice, all right, there, we're, it's moving pretty good right there. All right, there we go. Yeah, it's moving pretty nice right there. So we're just going to kind of leave it right there. And, you know, uh, I do recommend you guys get a top for your aquarium. You know, um, like uh, plexiglass or glass or solid top. This will help keep some of the heat inside, uh, number one. I did hit the thermometer. Let me go ahead and hit it again here and uh, check the temperature. Looks like the temperature inside is uh, 75.4 at present time, so this is good. I think I'm going to go ahead and move this guy into the uh, hottest room of my house, which is uh, my bedroom, actually. And I uh, just let it thrive in there because normally my bedroom is about 80 degrees, <laughs> normally. And uh, these guys will multiply and I'll get to watch them. So yeah, put a cover on it so you don't get any uh, contamination in there. Also, it'll also help keep everything a little bit warmer. You know, optimally we would want the temperature up at around like, you know, I don't know, 85, 90, you know, 91, 92 or so. So if you get uh, a heater for an aquarium heater, like if you are setting it up in the winter time or when it's cold or you keep your house really cold, you will want to get an aquarium heater. And I recommend you guys set that at about 75. If you set your aquarium heater too hot, you know, the heater will actually get hotter than the temperature you set it for, right? So if you set your aquarium heater for like 75, it might get up to 85, right? And if you set it for 85, it might get up to 95. So we don't know the variance because every aquarium heater is a bit different to set it at 75 to be safe and it's better to be safe than sorry because you can lose your cultures really fast if they get overheated and they get burned. So yeah, I mean, oh, the last thing is we, we need to set this by a window, right? A sunny window. You don't want the heat if it's super hot blaring on it, but you do want it to get some nice sunlight during the day. So we're going to go ahead and put this near a, a window where it can get plenty of sun during the day and also get a little bit warmer. And uh, my goal is to go out and get a cover, probably a top plastics. We'll get a custom uh, you know, cover for this to uh, go on the top of my aquarium so that my spirulina can multiply in peace. I mean, this is how easy it is to grow spirulina at home. And I'm sad to say that it's actually even easier than growing microgreens, it's easier than growing sprouts, and it's heck of a lot easier and then growing your greens and growing your vegetables outside in the garden. I believe everybody should be growing their own nutrient-rich spirulina, you know, full of all the amino acids, higher in protein than animal products, plus it has the phytochemicals and phytonutrients that they have a lot of research on that shows that it's beneficial against many different diseases and, of course, just to keep you healthy and to allow you to have more endurance as an athlete. I mean, this is definitely one of my top superfoods in the entire world. If you want to learn more about getting a kit yourself, you can check out Spirulina Systems at spirulinasystems.com. I'll put a link down below. Also, be sure to use the discount code GYG or go to the special webpage that I have linked down below to get a special uh, Growing Your Greens discount for my viewers. So my spirulina is now up and growing so that live, fresh, water-rich spirulina grown by my very hands. Um, the final thing I like to say is that uh, my kit, the X System kit that I got shipped to me, was supposed to actually have an X uh, harvesting system that would be included uh, with the package. And when I unboxed it, it was actually not in there. So I learned that actually that part of the kit was back ordered, so that'll ship separately. Normally it ships with the kit. And when I do get that, I'll show you guys how easy it is to harvest your spirulina. Otherwise you'd use like a standard like fish net, which is kind of a pain. So this system makes it really easy and convenient so you could harvest your spirulina every other day in this 10 gallon setup.
So the next thing I like to say is actually growing your own spirulina is actually quite affordable. Once you've got the system in place and you're up and going, it's going to cost as low as about a dollar um, to grow one pound of fresh spirulina, which is actually super cheap. I mean, if you think of any kind of leafy green in the store, it's generally over a dollar a pound. Um, you know, right when you get the system, your cost maybe, you know, under $2 a pound. And that's still a really good price for a really amazing superfood because check this out, growing your own spirulina, you will save money. You can invest once with this kit and you could grow spirulina literally forever. You just have to keep buying the nutrients to put in there. And if you go and buy spirulina, you know, at the health food store, like one bottle like this could cost like 50 bucks for a high quality spirulina such as this one by Health Force Superfoods. And if you're not going to grow your own, I do recommend you actually get the Health Force Superfoods True Ganic Spirulina, some of the best stuff out there. So yeah, you will save money and you'll have higher quality than even bottled products can provide. And of course, you can dry it yourself if you want. Now the last thing I'd like to say is, you might be thinking, John, it's great you guys showed us how to grow it and you talk about how you're going to save money and how you can continue just to keep growing it once you have the kit once, but how does it taste, man? Does it taste like you're eating rotten fish? Does it taste like, you know, you're eating dirt? I mean, what does it taste like? So I've tasted spirulina before many years ago and I actually have a video on that. Actually, I'll post a link down below when I tasted fresh spirulina that was being grown in a tank set up like this, because I've learned about this for many years. It's finally, I'm glad I've gotten an easy to use kit that I could explain to you guys, because you know, a lot of places actually just, you could buy the culture, then you have to figure it out and do it DIY and make the nutrient mixture yourself. That's a pain in the ass. And I've always wanted to show you guys a really easy kit that anybody could use and set up um, and grow successfully the spirulina like I did today. I mean, this is super simple. You don't have to even think. Well, you have to think too much. Um, to set it up, just follow the easy directions that I showed you guys in this episode. So what it tastes like, I mean, it just totally tastes neutral. Like if you don't like the taste of kale, you're probably going to love the taste of spirulina. It just, it kind of has like a fluffy texture and it really doesn't taste like anything. Like I had it flavored with some like, uh, some mint essential oil and it tasted like mint, but basically the flavor of the spirulina you're growing is going to take on any kind of flavoring that you put in there. So if you put it in like a smoothie with some bananas and some blueberries um, and some spirulina, you're really not even going to taste the spirulina, but it, yet it's going to be in there. Turn your smoothie green. You're going to get the power of the chlorophyll plus all the vitamins and minerals and, you know, uh, phytonutrients plus antioxidants. This is the uh, phytocyanins, which are really good for you in there. So yeah, the taste is actually a really a non-issue in my opinion as it pretty much is a very neutral flavor. So yeah, this pretty much brings me to the end of this episode. Uh, once again, I want to encourage you guys to check out spirulinasystems.com to get your very own system. Uh, be sure to check the link down below and be sure to use the uh, special offer uh, coupon code GYG for a special discount or you know check the special link down below um, you know, to get the special deal, GYG only viewer price so that you guys can start growing your own number one superfood, most protein rich. And if you're a prepper, you've got to start growing your spirulina. So in case shit hits the fan, you won't even have to go outside because you can grow this shit under some good full spectrum lights as well as the good old sun. And I mean, literally you could live off this stuff if you had to, right? If you had to. So anyways, if you like this episode, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know. I'll have more episodes with Harvesting My Spirulina. I really like this kit. I'm excited about it. Also, be sure to check my past episodes. I have over 1,100 episodes now on all aspects of growing your food. Normally outside in the garden growing vegetables. It's the first one of its kind growing my own superfoods in my fish tank. And also be sure to click that subscribe button. Super important. Be notified when I'm harvesting my spirulina when I'm using it in different recipes and show you guys how to use this spirulina and uh, when I actually upgrade this into larger tanks and then when I actually take some of my culture and then transfer it over to my girlfriend and get her inoculated and grow in the spirulina as well. So uh, 
Once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep on growing. All right, this is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com coming at you from my front yard garden. And I have another video with good old Josh. It's another rant video, but this one's very important. I mean, yeah, plastic, the plastic one was important. If you haven't watched that, hey, check below for the plastic one. But this one's even more important than the plastic one that Josh 